Hello and thanks for joining us on Nationwide on the NTA. I am Lauri Balahassan. President Muhammad Buhari has called on leaders of the All Progressives Congress, APC, to build a united front that can propel the governing party to victory in the forthcoming governorship election in Ekiti State. Addressing the Southwest leaders of the party Wednesday evening, the president emphasized that everything must be done towards ensuring that this time around the will of the people is not subverted. State House correspondent Adam Musambo has details. It was an interactive dinner between President Muhammad Buhari and the Southwest APC leaders as well as stakeholders aimed at charting the best way forward for the party as the governorship election for Ekiti State draws near. In attendance were Vice President Emio Shimbaju, members of the National Working Committee of the party, Ashiwaju Bola Ahmed Tinubu, Chief Bisi Akonde, Southwest Governors of the APC, the governorship candidate, as well as the aspirants. President Muhammad Buhari, who described the election as crucial, noted what he called the hunky-punky that attended the 2014 gubernatorial election in Ekiti State, recalling the first-hand account from some of the dramatis personae in the unfortunate saga. We must do everything to ensure we do not allow any subversion of the will of the people this time around. Now that we have a candidate, all hands must be on deck to achieve positive result. I want to appeal to all of you to see this as a collective mission to restore ACT and promote development. The president who commended the candidate, Dr. Faemi, for reaching out to his core contestants with a view to working together is worried that the values of forthrightness Kando and integrity equity people are known for seem to have been lost, insisting that the fountain of knowledge must be returned to its pride of place in the Committee of States. The return of equity into the fold of progressive states is going to be a key pointer to subsequent elections. On my part, let me assure you that you can count on my support. But charity must begin at home. I urge equity leaders and the leaders from the Southwest to take this assignment seriously. Let us return to the field to work hard and deliver victory to our great party. The session continued behind closed doors where questions, observations and suggestions were taken. Former interim chairman of the party, Chief Bisi Akonde, speaks on his impression. Equity belongs to APC. Yes, and it belongs to the progressive from the beginning. But unfortunately, it slipped. This time, we are all going to be behind our party to bring equity back, you know, to progress. Equity governorship election comes up on the 14th of July this year. From the State House, Adam Musambu, NTA News. The Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, says the new chapter in the history of elections in the country by using the electronic voting machine introduced by Kaduna State Independent Electoral Commission for the local government pool will be carefully studied as part of efforts towards improving on electoral process in the country. This was while discussing e-voting on NTS program Good Morning Nigeria. Patricia Esami Luba reports. The Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, introduced card readers and other electronic machines in recent times as part of efforts to improve the integrity of the voting process at both state and federal levels. The use of electronic voting machine in the just-concluded local government election in Kaduna State is another step towards giving credence to the nation's electoral processes. Chairman of the Kaduna State Independent Electoral Commission, Dr. Sarah Tubinta Diko Audu says the e-voting system was credible and secured. But you see there is a facility on this machine that can actually read your smart card reader, read your permanent voter's card and your fingerprint. Both of these can be deployed on the machine to make it much simpler for voters to, to use. I believe that um, it's possible for Nigeria to go totally electronic. Deputy Director 
ICT INEC, Okenwe Pascal commends the initiative, which he describes as a process of transition from analog to digital, now gaining acceptability by the people. Uh, INEC is in the process of bringing people along. I think that the transition from the manual process to electronic is becoming widely accepted or 95% accepted. That is why I cannot, can even go the first, the next stage into uh, the actual, what we we'll call the e-balloting. Should matters, however, call for caution in the deployment of e-voting. We need to be a little cautious. I, I see um, you were raising expectations. Then the back end of it, because yes, you can do this balloting, but what about e-collation? We didn't see e-collation. We saw e e voting, and then we are being we are not being given the whole picture. There is not yet opportunity for learning. In several of our interface with CECOM uh, stakeholders, uh, we are insisting that they needed to have those um, manual ballot receipts uh, cross-checked uh, against the electronic um, results. The guests say. Electronic voting is the way to go in line with global best practice. In Abuja, Patricia A. Samiluba, NTA News. About 102 groups in support of President Muhammadu Buhari's re-election in 2019 have so far identified with the Buhari Support Group Center. The Director General of the Center, Umar Dembo, confirmed this in Abuja while receiving two new groups. Timothy Yusuf reports. The two new groups are Coalition for Buhari Oshimbajo Rescue Mission 2019 and Coalition for Transparency, Democracy and Development. Their visit to the center is to officially announce their resolve to work for the re-election of President Muhammadu Buhari, whom they say deserve a second term, based on his unprecedented record of achievements. We come from the top -line areas mostly for we from the northeast part of the country, which we have undergone some turbulent history over times, but we have since a very reasonable uh, you know, recovery out of what they have destroyed from what we have there. And whether you like this government or not, they have achieved seriously, most especially, most especially in the area of security, uh, in the area of uh, 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 fighting corruption. The need to step up sensitization of the rural dwellers, especially on the need to key into our next continuous voter registration and collection of PVCs, was the central message of the Director General of the Buhari Support Group Center to the new groups. These are volunteers, people, people who love to do this work, who want to make sure that we have a country. We have a country free of corrupt people, we have a country free of uh, all these killings and uh, free of uh, people who want to say they are Nigerians, they are the Nigeria, whereas they are making milk in Nigeria. The Buhari change, the participation is real and it is a grassroots that created the sport base. Other speakers say the Governing All Progressives Congress, APC, has achieved so much for the country and deserve consolidation towards attaining a better Nigeria. In Abuja, Timothy Yusuf, NT News. Minister of Information and Culture, Lai Muhammad, says the recent spate of clashes between farmers and headsmen should not be attributed to ethnic and religious reasons, but demographic, environmental, social and economic dynamics of the time. The minister stated this at a town hall meeting on farmers' headsmen clashes in Abuja. We can be open to interrogation to the real causes of the incessant clashes that have captured national and international attention and turned former neighbors and friends to bitter enemies. So that together, we can help to evolve a lasting solution to this crisis. Other ministers and concerned bodies at the meeting emphasized on the need for reorientation at the grassroots as well as educational opportunities for children of both farmers and herders. Pan-African Parliament calls for African leaders to give amnesty to persons who are 
in illegal possession of arms and light weapons. This, they believe, is the best measure to map huge quantity of light weapons smuggled into Africa. Ignatius Nko reports. The world today is manifesting violence and armed conflict, global terrorism and organized crime. These unarguably are products of uncontrolled and increased smuggling of small arms and light weapons. Africa at the moment is grappling with proxy wars and intercommunal crises and insurgency exacerbated by easy acquisition of firearms and light weapons. Mais il est de plus en... As a result, the first item on the order paper of the plenary of the Pan-African Parliament was a report on supporting 2030 Agenda, the Arms Threat Treaty and the United Nations Programme of Action on Small Arms through increased international parliamentary engagement. To strengthen links between the executive and legislative branch of government and between parliaments and civil society on armed violence prevention and reduction agenda. The report tagged connecting the dots encourages arms amnesty initiatives, cooperation between government and populations at the grassroots, and collaboration with the media. We also want to promote and support arms amnesty initiative among relative relevant government entities, ensuring the protection of the population and participation. Indeed, this practice has devastating costs to the continent. It creates a vicious cycle which hinders the much desired development. Member of Parliament from Sudan, Amin Abdallah, shared the Sudanese experience. Amnesty is the way to go. In Sudan so far, we have collected 10,000 pieces of small arms and have strengthened our sensitization. We need to insist on the African Union and the UN that most of our peacekeeping forces must include increased women soldiers as peacekeepers and peace enforcers. C'est très important parce que le problème de la police... This report must not end in this parliament. We must take it to all our national parliaments. This is a very serious issue. I come from Cameroon. There, the government has banned sales of arms. Members of parliament were however advised to ensure the ratification of treaties and protocols on small arms and light weapons and to enhance cooperation among African countries. From the Pan-African Parliament in Johannesburg, South Africa, nations for NTNs. The House Committee on Emergency and Disaster Preparedness has extended invitation to the Office of the Accountant General of the Federation to provide it with documents that will fast track investigations into the IDP's food contracts. This is the resolution at the Senate at the seventh sitting of the Committee on the Matter. National Assembly correspondent Abdullahi Aminu reports. The investigation, which begins on the 21st of March 2018, is focusing on the two major issues concerning the food intervention program in the northeastern part of the country. The committee seeks to know whether due process was followed in line with the Procurement Act in awarding the contracts to six companies at a total cost of over 9 billion naira. Government asked us to buy the 10,000 metric tons and give 5,000 metric tons to WFP for distribution in the northeast. We we'll definitely need some, some, of, some information, but for now, we will discharge some of the agencies like the Nigerian Customs Service. If they have any information, they can also provide that within uh, a week. The committee is also investigating the 6779 metric tons of rice donated by the Chinese government to IDPs in Nigeria. It is based on a report that the committee received indicating that the rice was not cleared from Lagos port until after 11 months of the delivery, leading to amount of money in demorage. The committee has, however, requested certification from the Minister of Finance, Office of the Accountant General, of the Federation and Central Bank of Nigeria for justification on the procurement process. From the National Assembly, Abdullah Aminu, NTA News.
and the National Commission for Refugees, Migrants and Internally Displaced Persons, in collaboration with Nisa Premier Hospital, is providing medical intervention to internally displaced persons in Wasa, a settlement which is about an hour's drive from the federal capital territory. Chimdima Ndubisi was there and now reports. Wasa Internally Displaced Persons Camp, set up in 2014, has an estimated population of more than 5,000 persons displaced by insurgency in Boronu, Adamawa and Yube states. We are facing lots of Sarah, 29-year-old nursing mother, tells me that the widespread illnesses here are malaria and typhoid with increasing cases of high blood pressure after effect of insurgency. So, the National Commission for Refugees, Migrants and Internally Displaced Persons is partnering NISA Premier Hospital to provide treatment. We are treating acute injury, illnesses and providing immunization services. Today is World Hypertension Day, so we decided to use this day to mark the day as well as to reach out to these uh, people that might not have uh, access to basic health services. This is not the first time the Commission is bringing aid to this vulnerable group whose means of livelihood is limited. Two months ago, she bring like 137 grinding machine to help our women with farm, so she, she bring chemical. For now, the community is grateful to the federal government and other philanthropic organizations for remembering them. They are, however, appealing to relevant agencies to facilitate their return to their ancestral homes. In Abuja, Chimdema Ndubisi, NTA News. And as Muslims mark Ramadan, a non-governmental organization, Doctors Around the Earth, has commenced a 30-day feeding program for internally displaced persons in Abuja. Obiageli Ugoke reports that the program is tagged support towards Ramadan Iftar 2018. The reports. Sharing of food is such an important aspect of Ramadan. In fulfilling these obligations, doctors around the earth are reaching out to internally displaced persons in Durham camp to ensure they are carried along during the celebration. The activities of Boko Haram in the past seven years have forced over a million people to flee their homes. This resulted in an unprecedented humanitarian crisis. If a woman, woman gets small thing to do, she will do it and help their children. One thing in come here which we know is food. With the view of providing succor, doctors around the earth is focusing on internally displaced persons camps and mocks throughout the Ramadan iftar period. This program is to feed 30,000 people in four different states. One is Abuja, two is Adamawa State, three is Yobe, and the fourth is a Boronu State. Right now, we have a, a program to build about 5,000 houses in each of these northern states for IDP. And this program will, will enable them to, to, to do their, 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 their Ramadan, inshallah, without facing any challenge. Other areas of focus include provision of emergency health care response to persons of all ages and gender throughout the Ramadan period and sensitization on the essence of the holy month and advocacy for peaceful coexistence. No fewer than 3,000 internally displaced persons reside in this camp without basic sanitation facilities but with assistance of this philanthropist in addition with federal government efforts, conditions around here is gradually improving. Obiageli Uboke, NTA News. Thank you, Obiageli. And the House of Representatives Committee on Environment and Habitat has frowned at the conflict of rules that brought unnecessary bureaucracy among the organs involved in the Ogoni cleanup project. To this end, the committee has met with relevant agencies to ensure proper adherence of the project. National Assembly correspondent Abdullahi Aminu reports. 
the issues raised by members at the meeting were the committee's observations during an oversight to the pilot remediation sites in Ogoni land. They include excessive engagement of consultants by the board of trustees and different governance structure, which led to duplication of mandate. I see there's a disconnect somewhere, all the way from BOT, governing council, before it comes to the man you've recruited. So what is really going on? We're going somewhere. We need to know, I need to know where the issues are. There are field operations headed by the chief operating officer and other support departments. The project coordinator coordinate all the activities of those involved in the project coordination office. Meanwhile, the House Committee on Foreign Affairs has held a meeting with Foreign Affairs Ministry over the killing of a Nigerian in Sudan. The need for Nigerian visa policy issuance to meet global standard abused a Nigerian student in India and the need to review Nigeria's immigration policy with India were also discussed at the meeting. The High Commissioner in India to take another look at the migration agreements um, so that we can give soccer to our, our citizens in those countries where we can have those conversations. Also at the House of Representatives Committee on Federal Capital Territory Area Councils and Ancillary Matters met with the Abuja Area Councils on a proposed bill concerning their administrative functions. Committee Chairman Dapanaya Jisalu said the committee will carefully study submissions on the need for movement of staff from the area councils to the Federal Capital Territory Authority and appointment of supervisory councillors from the National Assembly. Abdullahi Aminu, NTA News. Another boost for the agricultural sector as a fishing vessel floats on the waterways. Hingino in Lagos has details and more reports. Hello, Hingino. Thank you, Laurie. It's good to have you join us in Lagos. The development of the non-oil sector of the Nigerian economy is a deliberate policy of the federal government to promote the agriculture and manufacturing sectors of the economy. Minister of State Agriculture and Rural Development, Senator Henneke Lopobiri, says more private sector investors are needed to diversify the economy. Paul Omukago has details. The minister was speaking at the commissioning of two privately owned fishing trawlers in Lagos, promising incentives and enabling environment for investors interested in the fishery subsector. Senator Lopabri explained that government has made remarkable achievements since 2015 as it now produces 1.1 million metric tons of fish for local consumption and exports. He added that with a gap of 2.5 million metric tons still to be met, government can only support and pave the way for certification of private firms in the production of seafood. We're going to be reducing you know, the licenses for fish import. What we did last year, we gave less than 1 million metric tons. At the end of the day, those who were able to import into the country were only about 500,000 metric tons. With a backward integration policy where we said, look, if you invest in aquaculture in the country, we will give you a uh, fish quota to import. A lot of people are, you know, investing. A lot of companies have already made massive investment in the country. And that is why you saw the almost 100% increment. The chief executive officer of the Nigerian Export Promotion Council, Shegun Awolowo, said the plan for a zero oil economy will be pursued vigorously. The idea is that Nigeria can and must survive in a world in which it no longer sells oil. That means we identified about 22 sectors all across and many of those sectors are agricultural sectors, about 19 of them. The high point of the event was the official inauguration. In Lagos, Paul Omukagu, NTA News. The Nigeria Customs Service Federal Operations Unit Zone A, Ikeja, intercepted various contraband and undeclared goods worth over 1 billion naira between April and May 2018. The seized items are 30 exotic vehicles and 5,516 bags of foreign perboiled per rice, among others. Paul Omukagu again has details. The brand of seized vehicles are seven Toyota Elux, 
three Toyota Prado SUVs, one Range Rover, and one Ford Edge. Other items include 1,078 cartons of frozen poultry products, 216 jerry cans of vegetable oil, 173 bales of second hand clothing, and 683 pieces of used tires. Eight sacks of India hemp weighing 134 kilograms were among the lot. A comptroller revealed that 14 suspects have been arrested over the seizures, while two containers were also seized for false declarations. We got them on the highway, believing that they will beat our eyes. Some of them through the land borders in the course of our free movement. The controller warned economic saboteurs to halt their illegal operations within the zone as anti-smuggling operations have intensified. We always widen our tentacles, our investigation, our exchange of ideas to make sure that goods, smuggled goods, or goods that the federal government money has not been collected adequately will never escape our eyes. Apart from the seizures, over 28 million naira was realized by the unit from underpayments. In Lagos, Paul Omukago, NTA News. And those are our top stories from Lagos at this hour. It's back to Lorraine Abuja for more on Nationwide. Many thanks, Hinginu. This is Nationwide on the NTA. Time to pause for some messages. The news continues shortly. Don't go away. Hate speech is not a joke. It incites genocide and crimes against humanity. Most of Africa's civil wars are caused by hate speech from one tribe against another. We don't want it here. The Nigerian government stands firm against hate speech. Under no conditions whatsoever should we tolerate or excuse or justify hate speech or hateful conduct of any kind, especially where such is illegal. There's no doubt that the resurgent push for separatism, as well as the rising cases of ethnic and religious disharmony, are all traceable to the growing phenomenon of hate speech. One nation bound in freedom, peace and unity. Nigeria, one nation, one people. This is a public service announcement brought to you by NTA. The management of NT Abuja Channel 5, the producers of Sahul Life on NTA, cordially invite the general public to the 15th anniversary of Sahul Life and Ramadan lecture, scheduled to hold as follows. Theme, Islam and Peace, date, Saturday 19th May 2018, third Ramadan, 1439 after Hijra, time, 9 a.m., venue, main auditorium, Shehu Musa Radua Center Abuja. Guest speaker, Ustaz Nuruddin Lemu, topic, Peace, the real message of Islam. Second speaker, Ustaz Abubakar Sadiq. Topic, peaceful coexistence in a multi-religious society. Lessons from Sahul Life on NTA. Chairman of the occasion, Lieutenant General Abdurrahman Dambezaw, retired, Honorable Minister of Interior. Special guest of honor, Al-Haji Lai Mohammed, Honorable Minister of Information and Culture. Father of the day, Al-Haji Idris Musa, Sarki of Jua. Chief host, Malam Yakubo Ibn Mohammed, Director General NTA. Come celebrate with us as we mark a mile in the history of your darling program, Sahu Live. Management announcer. Brought us as usual. As usual. You have to come. You are welcome, sir. As usual. Yeah. You take that one. You take that one. You take that one. Yeah. We don't understand. We want Nigeria homegrown life. Finish. You don't have. You don't have. Join the rice revolution today. No other rice that tastes like Nigeria rice. Are you sorry? No, you That's chop. the Nigeria rice we are talking about. Chocolate made in Nigeria rice. Healthy food. I'm going to bring Mrs. Mum to the Angobo. To come to chocolate rice of milk in Nigeria here. Yeah. <laughs> and see how it's a make. Correct, correct. And now they are cooking. <laughs>
Homegrown rice are good for your health. It are boost our economy and I give employment to our people. This message is brought to you by the Federal Ministry of Information and Culture. Get the latest news and updates from across Nigeria on NTA Nationwide. NTA Nationwide, weekdays by 4 p.m. Get it first, get it fresh. Thanks for staying tuned. Let's now join Kemi in Ibadan for an update on Ibadan Rail Track and other stories making rounds. Hello, Kemi. Hello, Laurie. Good afternoon and welcome to Ibadan. Hypertension is described as a killer with its symptoms not outrightly noticeable until major harm has been done to the organs. As the world celebrates Hypertension Day today, medical experts urge the citizens to take cognizance of their health to prevent fatality. From K.B. Damiton reports. Hypertension, which is also known as high blood pressure, is a condition in which the force of the blood against the artery wall is too high. The pressure depends on the work being done by the heart and the resistance of the blood vessels. As the world celebrates World Hypertension Day, how aware are the people on hypertension? If you are being stressed, you can have it. I am not a doctor, but you can still manage it because I'm managing my own. Experts say it is a global health condition with various underlying health challenges. Hypertension is a serious disease and is increasing in this country and worldwide. Uh, and we, it's associated with uh, stroke, it's associated with sudden cardiac death, there have been history of heart attack, and people are dying unnecessarily these days. The purpose of the day, according to him, is to promote public awareness on hypertension and how to encourage people to prevent this silent killer. The World Hypertension Day was first inaugurated in May 2005 and has become an annual event. This year's theme is Know Your Numbers. In Ibadan, Funke Bidamiton, NTA News. Reactions have continued to trail the recent signing of contract agreement between the federal government and their Chinese counterpart for the commencement of work on the Ibadan Kaduna railway segment. Ayomiko Ajibola has the details. As the federal government, in partnership with the Chinese government, swung into action to restore rail transport across the country, the most critical, according to the Buhari led government, is the Lagos Canal Link contract agreement of $6.68 .6 billion signed between the federal government and the construction company for the Lagos Cardinal Railway segment of the Lagos Canal Railway Line. Nigerians believe when completed, it will boost economic activities, improve safety of life and property, as well as reduce cost of doing business. By the time they upgrade it, you know how a uh, trailer used to consume money in terms of transportation, going from Lagos down to Ibadan, it costs much money. Unlike railway, it wouldn't be like that. So it will be an opportunity for the whole Southwest in general. So we really appreciate what government is doing. It will reduce the cost of transport. Railway is a better transport means for Nigerian people. We need it. It's able to help the common man, pay the masses, and it will relieve um, a lot from Nigerian road. So it's a good uh, initiative by the federal government. The Ibadan Kaduna Standard Gauge Line will pass through Oshobo Ilori, Mina to Kaduna, with a single track branch line from Oshobo to Adrekiti. In Ibadan, Ayomeku Ajibola, NTA News. Speakers at a sensitization program on conservation and protection of public assets and infrastructure have appealed to Nigerians to avoid unpatriotic attitude and actions that could cause economic loss and untold hardship to the nation. The National Orientation Agency, Quara State, organized the program that created an avenue for interaction between the government and the citizenry. Abdul Wahid Bibiri has the details. The state director, National Orientation Agency, Quara State, Olusha Gwadeyemi, said the upsurge in acts of vandalism of public infrastructures was the reason for the stakeholders' forum. He said Nigerians should henceforth change the belief that public infrastructures belongs to government and should be maintained and protected solely by government. It has become expedient for the National Registration Agency to step up efforts in mobilizing citizens to take ownership 
of the, pre of the protection of public infrastructure as well as elicit positive behavioral changes. There were remarks by the representatives of the Commissioner of Police, the Commandant, Nigerian Security and Civil Defense Corps, Quora Command, and Community Leaders, Abdul Wahid Bibiri, NTA News. And that's it from me, but back to you, Laurie, for the rest of the news. Thank you, Kemi. The necessity for Nigeria to rid itself of corruption is unnegotiable as the present reality shows the devastating effects of corruption. But to achieve this, there is need for national consensus to integrate the traditional and religious institutions as well as the citizens in, this, in the fight. This is the opinion of various authorities at the second anti-corruption situation room. Aliyu Tukur reports. Fighting corruption is the obligation of every citizen because everyone's future is tied in one way or the other to how they deal with the menace. To achieve this objective, human and environmental development agenda in collaboration with national orientation agency and other organizations put together an anti-corruption forum. The forum is to create a platform for civil societies, media, citizens and government institutions to ensure that the fight against corruption becomes everyone's business. There's um, nowhere in the world where the fight against corruption is won by um, just government institutions or government policies. It is by the people. This must not be an elite affair. Journalists must task the civil society organization to go out there and mobilize the Nigerian people to fight corruption because our people are the victims of corruption. The forum is to also look at the mandate of the special presidential panel on the recovery of public assets and see how citizens can engage the panel to ensure effectiveness and transparency. In Abuja, Ali Utukur, NTA News. Nigeria is expected to experience an economic growth of 3.5% this year. The country's economy grew in the fourth quarter of 2017 by 1.92%, and the latest GDP figures indicate that the economy is improving in all major sectors. A Nigerian member of the parliament, Sadiq Ibrahim, stated this while presenting the country's report to ECOWAS parliament. Joseph Orok reports. Speaking further on economic and social situation in Nigeria, Sadiq Ibrahim said Nigeria has satisfied three out of the four primary criteria in the implementation of macroeconomic convergence in the first half of 2017. On the performance of the secondary criteria, Nigeria, he said, satisfies two criteria, that of public debt not more than 70.0% of GDP and exchange rates variability criteria 10.0%. On the convention related to interstate border transit SART of goods, Nigeria has commenced the implementation of the ISRT protocol with an action plan to implement the phases. The first phase of the action plan involves study visit to Ghana and Togo in 2016. He said the security situation remains volatile, especially in the Northeast, while farmer hesmen's conflicts is another security challenge facing the country. On political situation, the spokesperson said there is a stable democratic culture as the Independence National Electoral Commission has outlined the election timetable for the next 86 years, starting from 2019 to 2055. The reports attracted questions and observations from members of parliament. You need to strengthen your intelligent wing of your law enforcement institution so that we call this thing because everyone who has African are black men. They keep asking all this issue of capturing girls in various schools in Nigeria. To assure you again that a lot has been done to make sure that the agricultural sector is given the attention it deserves. Member of Parliament and spokesperson of KEFED, Philomena Martins, also presented the country's reports with regards to political, security, human rights, freedom of expression, and the implementation of macroeconomic situation. In Abuja, Joseph Orok, NTA News. Let's now join Asmao in Sokwato for more reports. Hello, Asmao. It's good to see you. It's good to see you too, Laurie. Good afternoon and welcome to Sokwato. 
Kebi State Government is to collaborate with the World Bank to construct over 500 kilometers of roads in the state. Usman Abdullah Ishihu reports that Governor Bagudu disclosed this when he received the people of Yauri Emirate led by the Emir Dr. Muhammad Zayan Abdullahi. Yauri Emirate is one of the four distinct Emirates in Kebi State. The Emirate comprised of three local governments of Shanga, Ngaski and Yauri and all the local governments are affected by two major challenges of Sokoto Kwantagura Bad Road and frequent boat mishap on River Niger that cross the area. Governor Abubakar Atiku Bagudu, while receiving the Emir, disclosed that recently the Minister of Works, Power and Housing, Mr. Babotunde Fashola, assured federal government commitment to hasten the repairs of Sokoto Kwantagura Road being a federal road. The governor also announced that the state government has completed arrangements to collaborate with the World Bank and other donor partners to expend about $60 million to construct over 500 kilometers of rural roads across the state. The state governor, however, assured that the state government will provide funds to begin clearing of the river Niger in the area. Earlier, the Emir of Yauri, Dr. Muhammad Zayano Abdullahi, who led the delegation, appealed for more infrastructural facilities in the Emirate. Other demands by the Emir include the completion of Sokoto Kwantagora Road and clearing of the River Niger waterways in the area to prevent reoccurrence of frequent mishaps. The Secretary to the State Government, Al Haji Babale Umar Yaudi, described the visit as historical. The Emir of Yaudi, to His Excellency the Executive Governor, signifies how united Yaudi is, and it also unified both factions, tribes, and other uh, interests in, in Yaudi. In Britain, Kebi, Usman Abdullah Hishehu, NTA News. Over 3,000 patients are to benefit from free medical and surgical intervention by the Nigerian Air Force in Zurmi local government area of Zamfara State. Chief Medical Officer, Nigerian Air Force Headquarters, Air Vice Marshal Salimo Ishinkafi, says the intervention will cover all health conditions. Jamilu Ibrahim Guso has more. The Nigerian Air Force recently deployed some troops in Zurumi local government area of Zamfara State to address the lingering cases of Ambanditri and Katura students there. The force launched a free medical and surgical intervention as part of strategies to establish and maintain a cordial relationship between its personnel and the host communities. The outreach with the theme mitigating the medical and surgical needs of people of Zurumi local government area covers various elements such as hypertension, diabetes, malaria, hynia, rheumatism, eye problems among other health conditions. Head of Medical Services Nigerian Air Force Headquarters Abuja Air Vice Marshal Salem Oishinkafi who flagged up the program in Zulmi Town says no fewer than 150 persons out of more than 3,500 targeted beneficiaries are to undergo surgery during the medical outreach. We are collaborating with the, the, the clinic here in Zulmi. Cases that require surgery will be seen from here and then they will move to that side and they have their Air Vice Marshal Moi, accompanied by the Commander 207 Air Force Quick Response Group, so Group Captain Caleb Olaira, enjoined the benefiting communities to reciprocate the gesture by cooperating with the military personnel deployed in the area for the success of their assignment. Some of the beneficiaries who spoke with NTA News expressed delight over the medical intervention and prayed for the success of the military operation in the area. The medical intervention, which is built to last for three days, is being coordinated by the Nigerian Air Force Quick Response Group based in Gusau. In Gusau, Jamilu Ibrahim, NTA News. And that's it from Sokoto. Is back to Lorraine Abuja for more on Nationwide. Ramadan. Thank you, Asmau. Kaduna State Government prioritizes infrastructural development. Let's now join Muhammad in Kaduna. Hello, Muhammad. and good to see you. Kaduna State Government has reiterated its commitment to delivering the APC campaign promises to the provision of more social amenities that will alleviate the sufferings of Nigerians. Governor Nasser Ahmad Erufai reiterated this while reinteracting with people of Rigasa on the Igabi local government area of the state. Muhammad Umar Ajinge reports. Rigasa community is one of the largest ward in Nigeria with a population of about 3 million people, majority of whom contributed through their votes in bringing to power the APC government. To reverse the trend of underdevelopment in the area, 
The Aero Fire Administration is providing basic social amenities such as dual carriageway, health facilities, and blocks of classrooms to the community. It was against this backdrop that Rigasa community invited the governor to say thank you. I will provide more infrastructure and social amenities in Rigasa. They reiterated their support to President Muhammad Buhari's led administration. Governor Nasr Ahmad El Fai says the APC led government will continue to provide the right environment for sustainable development at all levels. In Kaduna, I am Muhammad Umarajinki, NTA News. And politics to defense matters now. Chief of Army Staff Lieutenant General Tukul Yusuf Buratai has assured personnel of the Nigerian Army of better accommodation within the resources of the Army Authority. The Chief of Army Staff stated this while on operational visit to military formations in Kachia, local government area of Kaduna State. Haman Jabani has details. Army School of Artillery, Kachia, is one of the oldest schools and training ground of the Nigerian Army. It was established to impact on the Nigerian Army Corps artillery personnel, the requisite knowledge and skill to enable them to provide optimum fire support to the Nigerian Army's attainment of Chief of Army Staff vision. For the school to achieve this mandate, the Chief of Army Staff, Lieutenant General Tukur Yusuf Borate, ordered the total renovation of the school. He visited the school to assess the progress of work. We want to have you in a very conducive environment where you will put in your best to learn. And that's where the professionalism comes in. NASA, which currently has 250 troops on various courses from two to six months, will have modern facilities that will bring out the best from the students. While in the school, Yusuf Borate inspected two artillery machines, 155 SP Bilkwa and 25U 23.4M Shalka, they were refurbished by the school. The Chief of Army Staff was also at the Palace of Ongom Adara of Kachia, where he thanked the Royal Father for his support over the years and solicited for continued support. General Officer Commanding 1 Division Major General Mohammed Mohammed and other senior ranking military officers under the directive of Chief of Army Staff inspected the ongoing work at 1 Division, Rebadu Cantonment, as well as other military facilities that need urgent attention like the Magadishu Base Ordnance Depot and the Command Children's School in Kaduna. Hamman Jabani, NTA News. In another development, Chief of Air Staff Air Marshal Sadiq Baba Abubakar has reassured of his resolve to continue to accord priority to the welfare personnel within available resources. He stated this at the graduation ceremony of course 1, 2018 at the Air Force Training Center in Kaduna. Achari Maxwell reports. The Nigerian Air Force Training School Kaduna trained 27 airmen and women in weapon handling, modern methods of map reading, drilling instructions, and general service knowledge, which lasted eight weeks. Chief of the Air Staff, Air Marshal Sadiq Baba Abubakar, who was represented at the graduation, said the course is a deliberate effort to improve on their skills, which the profession largely depends on. Over the years, we've had a depletion of uh, the people with those capabilities in the Air Force because there was a training gap and uh, at the end of the day we deem it necessary to train the younger ones. Commandant of the Air Force Training Center Kaduna, Air Commander Paul Daniel Masia reminded the participants that the course will add value to the Nigerian Air Force professionalism. The graduating participants today have been successfully exposed to take up roles as instructors. It is our hope that the knowledge they have gained would make them more productive so that they can add value to the Nigerian Air Force system. Participants who distinguished themselves during the course were recognized in Kaduna, Achari Maxwell, and TA News. And that report and our contribution from Kaduna. Lori, over to you. Thank you, Abdullahi. Time to take another break. The news returns shortly. Don't go away.
The A Television College, an affiliate of Amedu Bello University, Zaria, has over the years maintained her reputation of putting together courses that are highly relevant to manpower needs of the broadcast industry. The college is again organizing a four weeks course on English grammar and pronunciation for broadcasters, slated for 21st May to 15th June 2018. Come and take advantage of our top notch and intensive course designed to grow the skills of television presenters, script writers, news editors journalist, host of live events in just four weeks. Venue, multi-purpose complex, NTA Television College, Rayfield, Joss. Fee is 100,000 Naira per participant. Accommodation inclusive. Be there. NTA Television College, Joss. Training you to be the best you can be. Like it. It's another Children's Day celebration with NTA Knowledge. Like it promises it. to be exciting and full of fun. Come, let's celebrate Children's Day on 24th May, 2018. Featuring dance. Mad past, drama, musical talent display, choreography, cultural dance, culture in the train. That's not all. Bernie and Clown will be on ground to add color to the event. Theme, creating safe spaces for children, our collective responsibility. Schools, parents, what are you waiting for? You can't afford to miss this fun fair. Venue, NT Headquarters Arena, Area 11, Garuki, Abuja. Gate fee, 1,000 euro only. Time, 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. For participation and sponsorship details, dial. I like it. Come, let's celebrate children in a grand style. Happy, Happy Children's, Children's Day. Day. Don't bring Nigeria away to this. Lie, 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 lie. Most of us believe in buying anything foreign. We believe that if a product is imported, then it must be better. <laughs> The combo mentality. Patronize Nigeria and you will see that Nigeria too can put a smile on your face. I don't know that Nigeria is doing good thing now. Many agree and many disagree. I hope these are not made in Nigeria. Can made in Nigeria goods put a smile on your face too? Of course. We are proving the quality of our products. Find out in Made in Nigeria. This week's episode of a rib cracking comedy. Professor John Bull and laugh like never hey! before. How much is my total? Your money is 32,000 naira. 32,000 naira for just a pant and a top. Because it's foreign. Uh, uh, flash, come and pay now. Flash. Flash, Bobo. Over and out. Brought to you by Glow. The largest data network. Glow. Unlimited. <laughs> When you hear that sound, you know that Nigeria's most authentic newscast is about to begin. NTA Network News, breaking the news for over 40 years. Thanks for being there. Nigeria has been positioned to showcase its rich arts and craft industry globally as the Director General of the National Council for Arts and Culture, or Tumba Ulushegun Runshewe, has been appointed as the President of the World Craft Council African Region. Or Tumba Runshewe, who emerged as the President of the Council during the meeting of the Executive Board in London, has the responsibility for the regulation and development of the handicrafts to the world. Speaking on the impact of the position to Nigeria and Africa, the DG noted that the region's arts and craft industry would be properly showcased and revenue generated. Africa is a hub of heritage in the world, but it has not been pronounced. But with my office now, I'm going to make sure that that strength is very pronounced. This is the time for us to use this sector to create more jobs and make Nigeria a better the World Craft Council is a non-governmental professional organization affiliated with UNESCO. And now sports. Subcommittee inaugurated for 2018 National Sports Festival as Super Eagles maintain position in latest FIFA ranking. Kene Imagodike guides us on sports updates.